Welcome to this recording of the Partners 2020 Ask the Experts Industry Webinar for Psychology. This session was hosted by our careers consultant for the subject area, Sandra Hobson-Tate, and she's joined by our guests, Newcastle University alumni, Sophie Landman, who's currently working as a private psychological therapist and counselling psychologist in training, as well as Gershwin Gill, who after studying her BSc in psychology, is now using the skills she gained on her degree to make an impact as an outreach officer at the Newcastle University recruitment team. Both of our guests are going to be delivering short talks at the start of this session to tell you a little bit more about themselves, their time at university and their careers to date, before Sandra leads them in a Q&A with questions that have previously been submitted by partner students, as well as some of those who were able to tune in live. Without any further ado, we're going to hand over to Sophie to talk us through a little bit more about herself and her career. Hi everyone, I hope this is going to give um, some people some insight, whether you're joining today or whether you're going to watch this back at a later point. Um, as you can hear, I'm not from the UK originally. I am originally German, believe it or not, and I did my bachelor's degree back in Munich. Um, and I did a semester abroad in the States, so hence the accent, um, and finished my um, bachelor's in Germany and then was not quite sure for a while what I was going to do with a bachelor's in psychology because it, it provides you with a lot of options really. And um, I tried out a couple of different internships and um, the shoe never really seemed to fit until I tried a clinical placement um, for a couple of months in a local hospital. And I really, really enjoyed my time there. I felt that it was challenging every day, which is something that I need in my life because I get bored really, relatively quickly. And then I decided this is what I wanted to do. Um, and I knew that I wanted to have a degree that was internationally recognized. So Germany doesn't currently offer that. Therefore, I chose the UK. And I went to Newcastle University to my bachelor's, uh, my master's, sorry, uh, which was a foundations in clinical and forensic psychology. And um, that then gave me the ability to apply to a doctorate in psychology. Um, I can, we can speak a bit later about the differences of um, what kind of training you can do in order to become a therapist. Um, so I chose the counseling psychology degree. I went to Wolverhampton University, which is close to Birmingham. And um, it takes between three and five years to do that um, postgraduate degree. And I'm currently in my writing up phase. Um, but because I finished my training, I have started to work privately. And I'm also going to start as a psychologist in Germany just uh, in a couple of weeks, really. And um, that's everything you need to know in a nutshell. Please hit me with any questions that you might have. Great. Thank you very much, Sophie, for that insight. So Gershwin, we'll move over to you now, please. Just tell us a little bit more about yourself. Cool. So hi, everyone. Um, so my background is quite traditional um, in terms of kind of the educational route I took into higher education. So I did my GCSEs and then I went straight on to do A-levels. Um, and then as soon as, it, soon as I was in year 13, I applied to Newcastle University to do psychology. Um, I got in and then I was there for three years. So I just did a three years Bachelor of Science with honors degree at um, Newcastle. Um, so basically right now I've got a BSc honors in psychology. Something else to mention is that I was a home local student so I know that some of people that have been on partners um, or might be listening um, might be from the local area or in the Northeast. It's not that uncommon to stay at home or go to a really good university on your doorstep. So if you have any questions about that, feel free to ask me. Um, and then in terms of what I do now, um, so obviously I'm a recent graduate from Newcastle University and I'm now I'm employed by them as well in the student recruitment team. So my role is kind of in widening participation and outreach. So I'm an outreach officer. Um, and basically what I do is kind of represent Newcastle University UK wide in kind of recruiting, but also encouraging and promoting prospective students all the way from year five. So when you're really, really little to year 13 to get them into higher education, to consider Newcastle um, as a university, but not just Newcastle, 
just encouraging people who might not have ever considered going on to do something after their A-levels or after their B-tech or whatever they're studying at college to actually consider and give university a chance. Um, and that is something that I've always been passionate about. Um, and social psychology has always kind of fed into that as well. Um, and in terms of how Newcastle and kind of uni helped me um, go straight on to my um, degree after I graduated was confidence, communication and professional skills, definitely. Whilst I was at Newcastle, I didn't take a year out to do a placement year or as a kind of four year sandwich degree, you might have heard it be called. Um, I did a career development module instead. Um, and that is basically intertwined into your degree and means that you can still undertake placement. So I worked in a hospital for a few months. Um, I volunteered with children, lots of different things. Um, and that was all kind of in my degree as well and kind of helped shape where I wanted to go um, and what I wanted to do as well. Um, and all of these skills are transferable into the psychology industry, but also other things as well. Um, so if you do have any questions, um, feel free to ask me anything. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Right. So we are going to take some questions. So there's many different therapeutic disciplines that are offered in the UK. Could you tell us a little bit more about the differences between a counsellor and a psychotherapist, clinical and counselling psychologists? And the question also is, what are those different training routes? Because it often seems quite complicated. Yeah, I think that's an understatement, really. <laughs> um, England has the advantage that there is many different routes to make you be working as a therapist. Um, but because there's so much choice, it's also quite confusing sometimes. Um, so to begin with, you will need to know that there's options to become a therapist after um, a master's and there is those after a doctorate. So first off, it depends on how much time do you want to spend in university? How much time um, can you devote to this? Also, how, um, well, how much money do you have available? Because not even do some of these degrees cost money, but also you won't be working at the same time. So it's a very important a consideration. Um, let's start with a counselor. Um, there's many different um, recognizing bodies or regulating bodies that do those. So the most common or um, the biggest ones would be the BACP, so the British Association for Counselors and Psychotherapists. Um, and basically you do a master's in a counseling confession, um, yeah, counseling degree. And um, there is a few around the country, so there will be one wherever you're located. Um, yeah, and it's a, it's a regular master's program, which will have a large component of practicing hours. So you do internships and you will be having clients and having training. And usually you will be trained in uh, the humanistic or person-centered model. Um, there might also be some that then go on to become a CBT therapist, which is usually a top-up course that you can do. And CBT is just a different approach that you can use when that's, that's quite common in the UK and especially with the NHS currently. Um, if you want to become a psychotherapist, it is usually also a master's program, which is specifically psychotherapy. Um, and it is more commonly a psychodynamic program. So it's more to do with the background. So therapists who work psychodynamically work more with how have you grown up and how have your experiences led to the difficulties that you're facing right now. Whereas a counselor might be more acting about the here and now and trying to help you change maybe your behaviors or change how you view the world. So it's in, in the end, it's what you think might be fitting to your personality most. Um, that's something to consider and then inquire with different um, bodies that offer these degrees and see what fits best with you. Now, this is counseling and psychotherapy. And then there will be the doctorate programs, which um, make you a psychologist. And there is two strands in the UK. One is clinical and one is counseling. 
clinical SD1 that is funded by the NHS. So the programs are doctorate programs, which usually last for three years. It is quite hard to get into these programs. So there's about 500 people applying for one space every year. Um, in the only the only thing how to get in there really is to have a lot of experience. Um, usually that requires an assistant psychologist post, which are equally hard to come by. <laughs> so not to dis discourage you, but it will be completely um, mandatory that you have at least two years working experience, preferably within the NHS. Mm -hmm. um, after which you can then apply to a doctorate program. Um, so some people do a counseling degree and then become an assistant and then go on to be a doctorate. So it can be quite a strenuous path. Um, and it's also not one that is going to make you very rich. So if you decide to go into psychology, it's definitely something that is a passion choice and not one that is going to be very reputable for your life. And um, lastly, the one that I have chosen was a counseling psychology degree. And um, there's only 13 in the country currently. So it's, it's a quite small group um, that offers this course. And um, it has the advantage that you have to have experience, but it, it's not as strictly only NHS. Uh, you also have to show that you have a strong research background. So that's a bit more of a focus for these kind of degrees. So if that's your strength, then that's maybe more of what you want to be doing. Um, you have training during three to five years. And so you usually train in different models. That's another advantage of the counseling psychology degree. So you, I, for example, I've trained CBT and I've trained um, also in humanistic and also in psychodynamic. So all the things that I've mentioned before, it just combines that, which obviously it takes more time. And um, alongside this, you will also write a doctoral thesis, um, which is probably the hardest part just because you, you need to juggle so many things at once. And that's why a lot of people take more time than um, when they come in and they say that I do this full time, they still end up taking four years for it just because it's a lot. And um, you will have to pay for this degree, uh, which is another struggle that you, most of my colleagues have to have part-time work alongside it, which then makes it more difficult to hand everything in at time, et cetera, et cetera. But after all, it's a very rewarding career. And this is um, the clinical and the counseling psychology degree are definitely the ones that make you expert at your field. Um, and you can then go on into, after a couple of years, go into management, go up in the ranks of the NHS, if that is something that you intend to do. Great. Thank you so much for being thank you. Gosh, Sharan, a question for you. How important is having the relevant work experience when trying to get a job in psychology? Um, so as Sophie said, um, if you are going to go into kind of clinical psychology or actually working directly in psychology, I'd say from my experience and what other people around me who've gone down that route have done, work experience is very important. Um, often it's not just what you do, it's also how long you do it for. So if you do want to become a clinical psychologist, for example, that you definitely need at least two years relevant work experience in that relevant field. But also there's going to be people out there that have got three, four, five years experience and might also have an MSc. Um, so to get a job in psychology, if you're talking about um, clinical, uh, things like that, to get onto the programs and the taught programs, I'd say work experience is very, very important, not just from an academic perspective, but also um, like a personal one as well. So even if you go on to study psychology and you're unsure about whether you want to go down the clinical route or directly into that degree um, career, then I'd say have some work experience and go undertake placements like I did. So I worked in a, um, in a, in a hospital working with kids for um, a year um, and it'll kind of shape your ideas and thoughts and it'll actually make more sense in terms of what you actually want to do because you could end up doing a year placement and you might not actually want to go down the clinical route. And I know a lot of people who've um, gone into psychology 
knowing that they definitely want to be clinical psychologists and then got assistant psychologist roles and decided actually that's not for me but because they haven't even graduated yet they've got plenty of time to before they even graduate to get work experience elsewhere and then go into a completely different kind of career path and by kind of different career path I don't mean you know something that's completely different to psychology there's still roles that aren't just um, clinical based or kind of counseling base like you can still work in HR you can work in finance you can work with people um, what I would say in terms of getting work experience and what exactly you want is to look on the careers website that Newcastle Uni have as well and um, they really really helped me in terms of what experience I wanted and um, whether I actually wanted to go into clinical after university and just getting the experience is really important but also not it's not just important because that's what um, a university or postgrad wants from you. It's also important to realise is that actually what you want to do as well? Mm -hmm. It's a good opportunity to try and experience things, isn't it? Yeah. Questions just come in from Sophie and it's to both of you. It says in terms of the work experience, the clinical psychology, can this be done whilst you're at university doing your degree or does it have to be done afterwards? Yeah, so I have personally not ever heard of someone who's done this during university. It would most likely be some time after you've done your degree. Um, I'm obviously not sure whether you're referring to a bachelor's or a master's degree, so I would think that you would have to have at least a bachelor's degree. Whether you could do it alongside a master's, I'm not sure. Um, personally, I haven't heard of it just because it demands a lot of time. Most of the time, these are full-time positions, which you just won't be able to juggle both things. And it requires you to reflect a lot of the time because what you're going to experience is working with people who are mentally unwell. And it can be really, really taxing. And having to do that reflecting by yourself whilst you're stressing to meet a deadline at university might just put you under a lot more stress than it needs to be. And um, as I've already, I think, pointed out is that if you want to become a therapist, it will take you many years. Um, it took me nine. So just don't stress about uh, this half year there or, or here. It, it won't matter in the end. Um, just make sure that you get through it um, sanely. And by the end that you're done, you're not burnt out because that happens to a lot of people in the way as well. Thank you. So this is again a question for Sophie whilst you're here. What's the best and the worst career decision that you've made? <laughs> oh, wow. Well, <laughs> I think, I think that's really, it's really a hard question because there's always moments when you're saying, oh, that was not a good choice. But in the long run, every single one was very valuable because it brought me to the next step and the next step and the next step. Um, I think I would have benefited hugely if someone would have explained the UK system to me a little bit better, because if I would have known that I would have done a counseling or a psychotherapist masters and then worked as such, and then maybe done my doctorate a little bit later, or even decided that, you know what, this is already what I want to be doing. I don't need a doctorate. So that's probably something that I would do different if I do it again. Um, in terms of my best decision, I definitely am a huge advocate for the counseling psychology training, um, just because it's a bit deeper than the clinical one. I've heard a lot of um, just get it done already, pushing people through it, the NHS struggling to fill posts and just hurdling people along, whereas as a counseling psychologist, you have just more time. Obviously, you fund your own way, so they can't tell you to just get on with it because uh, you're, you're the one to, to pay towards your own education. Um, but ultimately, I feel like I have a much deeper knowledge than people who are the same age and have been through a clinical program. So I feel just a bit stronger in what I do. Um, I have a better foundation, personally. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you. It was a bit of a question, wasn't it? <laughs> Thank you. Gershwin, apart from your degree, 
how else do you feel that your time at university has helped you? Um, well, apart from just getting like the academic um, kind of knowledge and actually receiving the degree, I'd say um, there was a, it helped me a lot with kind of personal development and self growth, definitely in independence and my confidence. Um, after year 13, I kind of felt very deflated after doing A-levels. Um, I wasn't entirely sure that I was going to be able to take on um, doing a degree without taking it time out. I just went straight into it. But it turned out that I met so many great people along the way um, that, have, like, that are still like my best friends now and we all take in different routes. And it kind of opened up to me, taking like a psychology degree, opened up so many different paths for me. It wasn't just kind of, I'm going to go down this one route anymore. It opened up so many different things, whether it be whether I wanted to work with kids in the future or work in, um, in education and getting the skills kind of increased my confidence in being able to just kind of go out there and get placements, get work experience and apply for jobs. Um, there was a lot more to it than just the academic side. Right. Gosh, we've had another question that's just coming to, from Jody, who's asking, what was or what were the career development modules like? Why did you prefer it over a placement year? And was there more freedom to do different areas of work? Okay, so um, that's a really good question. And um, it is really like good that you're kind of thinking about the career development module because some people don't. Um, so career development module, it's something that is very unique to Newcastle University. And it is a module that you can take, uh, take instead of doing another academic module. So I took it instead of doing another one that maybe my other friends were doing on my course. And um, it has the same number of credits. Um, everything's pretty much the same, apart from you spend that time that you would have been maybe in a lecture or doing whatever, um, actually out on a placement. Um, so that's what the module is. You can take it in second and third year. Um, yeah, so, and it kind of, it's not just that you go on a placement and get that experience. You have seminars and kind of little lectures every week or every two weeks with a seminar leader that goes through, well, what did you learn on your placement? How is that placement actually going to help you in your career? And just, it helps you kind of talk through what you're actually learning on your placement. Um, why did I prefer it over a placement year is a really, really, really good question. So basically, when I went into my degree in psychology, I was completely set on, I'm going to become a clinical psychologist. That's what I'm going to do. Um, that's, that's my career path. Um, and like Sophie has just been saying, it is quite strenuous. It's, uh, you need a lot of work experience and it's, it's, it's rewarding, but it's, um, it's not as easy as just getting a bachelor's, getting a master's, and then you're straight onto the, um, straight onto the doctorate and at that point in time I thought that's how easy it was um, so the reason I did the career development module instead of the placement year is because I didn't want to take I didn't want my degree to be lengthened by another year um, just to get work experience when I could have got work experience um, the same the same amount as well I still worked f um, volunteering and getting work experience for a year like my other friends who did a placement year except I was doing my degree at the same time. Um, so I didn't want it to len len lengthen it, but also there was a lot more variety. Um, so it wasn't just, I can go and become an assistant psychologist for a year that was unpaid, which is something that you have to consider. So when you go and do psych psychology and if you're on your bachelor's, chances are that if you take a year out to do a sandwich year or a placement year, you you might actually be an assistant psychology or a, a research assistant unpaid for a year. So you'll just be funding yourself on your student loans. Um, a lot of the positions in psychology are unpaid because you haven't actually got a bachelor's yet. You're, you haven't got any experience. So that was another reason. Um, and yet there's definitely, definitely freedom to do different areas of work, like I said. So one year I was um, a marketing assistant for a hospital, working on a project to raise money for their wards. Uh, for palliative children and then on a different placement I was actually working on wards with children and then another one I was working teaching children um, 
and adults as well. So there's so much freedom. It, it's the career development module doesn't mean that you do psychology and you have to do work experience in psychology. You can, I know people who worked in marketing, worked in finance. It is, it's down to you to kind of come up with what you want to do, but they will definitely help you with the, the amount of variety of work. Mm -hmm. it sounds as if there's lots of flexibility in there as well, doesn't there? Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. Sophie, on to you. A question's come in. Um, from Alex, at the moment, I've not got a set career path. I'm totally undecided, apart from I want to do psychology. What would be your advice? When it's obviously unclear what means I want to do psychology, because I, I'm not sure whether that means therapy or that means um, being with people or it means social psychology or personal psychology or forensics. So it's hard to give a clear answer to that. I think going back many, many years for me, after my bachelor's degree, I wasn't sure. And what helped me was just to try out different things. So I went to, um, I worked for half a year in a strategy department of a um, advertisement company, which is a psychology role as well. Um, and then I worked for a change management process with BMW for half a year. And I also did other jobs that aren't strictly affiliated with psychology, but just like student jobs that to, to pay some bills. And you would be surprised how often your psychology um, abilities come into play and just knowing how people react, learning a little bit about social psychology, if there's a group it will behave differently than if it's a single person. And just knowing about that, it can, it can help you play your strength. Mm -hmm. And um, I know a lot of people who have done psychology degrees and ended up in managerial roles just because they know how to talk to people. And um, it's just very important that you try out different shoes and be honest with yourself and say, well, mm, no, actually this isn't it. Mm -hmm. And you might know as early as two months in that this isn't it. And then just say, okay, that was fun. You will definitely take this information forward and then you just try on something else. And don't be disheartened by the many no's that you get and by the please work for us for free because that will definitely be part of your story. Um, but just see it as a, it's a long life and in the end you'll find exactly what you want to do. And for me, it took many years but I am absolutely 100% certain that this is every step was necessary to get me to exactly where I want to go. Mm -hmm. Great yes yeah. thank you. Gershwin, a question you work as an outreach officer in WP what's the most rewarding aspect of your work? Um, so there's lots of rewarding kind of things that kind of come my way but um, I think the main one is when you actually get through to people that were kind of in your position a few years ago, maybe, or um, yeah, when you actually get through to them. So for example, sometimes I would visit a school where a lot of, a lot, a lot of students who were doing A-levels would be like, I'm the first person in my family to ever do A-levels. No one in my family um, and neither of my parents went to university. So it's just not something that my family do and it's not something that I'm going to do. And quite often when you would unpick it and just have a chat with them, um, it would be the case that they just hadn't even thought about the idea. It's not that they didn't want to go to uni. Um, and the rewarding thing from that would kind of be to see them talk through it with you and be like, oh, actually, it is completely accessible for me too. Um, university is definitely something that I can consider and that there's so many different, it's not just about having a traditional route into university anymore. There's um, schemes like the partner scheme that will help you during and before you apply to university um, and working with WP means it it means that we like I am kind of facilitating but also helping and even if that person doesn't go to university it means that they've considered it and they wouldn't have done that before um, and it could mean that they maybe even go on to it a few years later um, so yeah I'd say if I had to pick one thing the most rewarding would be actually seeing the effort that I go through maybe even if it's like traveling all the way to Brighton just for a morning lecture actually being able to get through to students and seeing them take on the idea of higher education is for me it is accessible it's not what it 
what they thought it might have been or what it was at, like a few years ago. Um, yeah. It sounds really rewarding, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you. Sophie, the question come in. What do you think employers look for on an application in addition to the degree and the qualifications? For a counselling psychology degree or for... Just I mean, say, just say this, <laughs> employers as in... Okay. What do you think they're looking for as well? What are the skills? Yeah, well, again, it will depend on what exact role you're going for. But in my experience, speaking a different language has great advances. Um, being from a different culture, whether that is a culture that is in UK originally, or whether that is like myself from um, somewhere in Europe. So that will, that will always stand out and you can always play that to your strength because especially the UK is so multilingual and diverse in, in many ways that if you can show that you are actually able to think like all the different groups uh, within the UK, then you have already got um, a case running for yourself. Um, just using, being, being aware of what your strengths are but also being reflective about saying what is not your best, um, your best self. Some, some really like to hear that just because it shows that you're open. It shows that you're honest and um, obviously having experiences, um, but it doesn't necessarily need to be psychology related at all times. I think I mentioned this earlier. It's just you having had an experience in this world and whatever the position you've had has made you into making you want to apply to this particular post. So well, how does this relate? And maybe it, it doesn't directly, but then just spend some time and find the connection. Uh, maybe it's made you more outgoing or maybe it's made you be uh, having really good phone skills. And so there's always something that you can take forward and just spend some time I think another thing that's always very good is you can, you can target your application. So we often do a one size fits all, especially if you're a little bit later on and you're like, well, I have all these credentials to my name. So obviously I'll just, show, I'll just send you a list and you'll like me. But it's sometimes easier if you say, no, I choose you because here is why. And showing that you can fill the role based on what you've had before, which takes extra work but it also gives you the time to say, well, hang on, do I actually feel that fit this role? Do I actually want it? Does this relate to things that I used to do in the past that I, that I enjoyed? Um, so it's a two-way street and um, that's a lot with the applications. Mm -hmm. Definitely. It's not just making sure that it's right for you, it's that you're the right person for the job and it's something you're really interested and passionate about. Great, thank you. Gershon, question. How did you find your voluntary roles? How did you go about that? Um, so whilst I was at uni, um, kind of in first year, it was quite easy to juggle um, volunteering and things like that. Um, when you get to uni, you'll find that it tends to be the case on a Wednesday afternoon, you don't have any lectures. So fitting it in, I found it was quite, it was fine. Um, and in terms of how I went about it was through the career service directly. Um, so Newcastle Uni do have a really, really good career service. In fact, I've graduated and I can still access it now. So you can access it up to three years after. So even if I wanted some experience now, I could go back. Um, and I went through the career service to find and source them, them voluntary experiences. Um, and that was quite easy in terms of the uni had the links with um, the major big hospitals or companies that I wanted to work with. Um, it, it would still mean that I had to reach out to them and I had to explain why I wanted the role. It wasn't just kind of given, given to me that easily. Um, but going about the role was, was fine really. I got the support that I needed um, and fitting it in. It gets a little bit trickier when you're in your second year. Um, I didn't find it as hard in my third year. I know that some people think that, um, or find, sorry, that um, dissertation year and final project might, m might mean that your final year is a little bit harder with fitting everything in. Um, but personally, I've just found my second year a bit more intense because it's a step up. 
um, you're not just learning the basics anymore. The modules do get a little bit harder, but the time was still there to fit volunteering in. Um, and it was, it, it kind of gave you, gave you a break from just being in lectures and just revising and being in the library. It was actually meeting people and talking to them and really, really re rewarding. So yeah, it was quite good. And fantastic for your CV as well, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Great. Thank you. Sophie, a question. Here's a good one. What do you think is your greatest strength? And also, what is your biggest weakness? Well, it plays to what I just said, isn't it? <laughs> um, so I think my biggest strength is that I have so many different experiences, starting from studying in different countries to experiencing and living in different cultures, but also having had the well, having had to think about a lot of different things, reading up a lot of different things, and just spreading myself really, really wide. Um, which is obviously also something that you get with age. So that's why people graduate from counseling psychology or clinical psychology at, a, at an older age, just because it takes time to mature and that's okay. It's part of the process. Um, what is it that I'm not so good at? Um, I think having to really bite yourself through so many years and so many hurdles it, it will feel like you have to jump through a million hoops and everyone's just trying to make your life a little bit harder um especially if you choose to fund yourself you start to get really feisty when someone tells you that you're not doing well that you that there's something that you haven't done as good as you could have just because you're like, hey, I'm just, I'm just struggling to survive. Cut me some slack here. I can't have you bickering about some seemingly small thing. So criticism is something that is difficult for me at times, especially if it's to do with my career. Um, and I think it's, again, it's the awareness that often sets in after the fact that you're like, hey, this person just wants you to be even better than you are and um, it's not against your person it's just usually something that makes you be more reflective and makes you be even better um and just yeah taking a step back and um as as all people as all therapists as everyone uh, we continue to learn and um i am that's that's my current topic or path if you will great thank you appreciate that gershon a quick mental question here how easy was it for you to find a job after you graduated? Um, so I was quite lucky in that um, I had a lot of experience um, doing lots of different things um, and working with people. So I found it quite easy and I'm not sure if it was just kind of um, not luck, but just because I got my applications out really, really early. Um, so in my third year, I started applying before Christmas time. Um, and I wouldn't say that's something that you just have to stick by, you know, you need to start straight away when in th third year, because I know people who haven't and they're still in jobs. Um, I found it quite easy. I applied for this, um, the job that I'm in now with Newcastle Uni, and I got it whilst I was about to submit my um, dissertation. So I found it quite easy. But obviously, in the current climate, it, things are a little bit um, harder. It doesn't mean that things are going to come back around, obviously, for people who are graduating now. Um, but also the degree that I was on, if you look at the statistics um, and Newcastle University in general has really, really good graduate prospects. So over 80, 90% of people, uh, people are going into um, graduate level jobs. Um, so yeah, I found, it, I found it quite okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. But it sounds as if you had a lot on your CV in the first place, that it made yeah, it def a lot of definitely. skills quite adaptable. Yeah, I'd say the experience definitely helped me because if I had nothing, to, it's it, a lot of jobs as well won't necessarily just ask for your CV. They'll ask you to fill out like a six, seven page application form. And within that, you have to write about your experiences, how they're actually going to help that job. And if I didn't have the volunteering experience I had during my degree, then I, I would have found it a lot harder than I did. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you. We have another question then has come in now for Sophie. What do you think are the important factors to consider when you're applying for a job? Well, it, first of all, where is that job? 
Is that job close to you? Will you have to move? Will you have to relocate and maybe leave friends and family behind? Um, and you will have to rebuild your, your, your own um, surroundings, basically. So that's one thing. Then obviously, what kind of job is it? Is it something that is up to your level? Is it something that you will be enjoying? Is it something that you've been maybe looking for for a really long time? Or else is it going to be a job that then leads you to what you want to be doing, such as an assistant psychologist post? Um, and if you're fortunate enough that the job you're looking for is something that will be paid, then obviously is the pay what you want to be paid. And a lot of the times people just look at the money value but if you think about it, you need to take into consideration, is this job, does it job require me to travel a lot? Because then it'll cost you money to travel. And then if, even if the pay is greater, but you spend X amount of money per month to travel, then that goes out of it. Does the new job require you to change your outfits and um, get a new wardrobe? Take that out of your paycheck. Um, does your job require you to work uh, over time? How much? Does that do they take that out of your, your paycheck? So always look at the big picture because in the end, a job should be something that you enjoy and the job is paying you for your time. Um, so much, how much is your time worth? Mm -hmm. I guess it goes back to your priorities, doesn't it? And it's that two way street. It's making sure that the job's for you and you're also a really good fit for the job and prioritizing what's important, I guess. Yeah, I'm, I'm a strong advocate for do what you think you're gonna love. Yeah. Um, just as a, if I, if I take myself, for example, a therapist, as I said before, it's not, it doesn't make you rich, it doesn't make you golden, but I, I get so much out of just helping other people. So it's almost a, it's a currency that you cannot measure in money. So if this is enough for you, um, maybe because uh, it's enough to, to cover the cost of living or maybe because your partner has a job that pays really well, then please do what you're passionate about because you're going to be doing it for 40 years of your life. Um, so if you're fortunate enough, then do choose something that you're passionate about, even though it might not pay you as well as you think you're worth. Mm -hmm. And a question for Gershon now, where do you see your career heading? Um, in terms of, well, I didn't even expect to be where I am right now. Whilst I was even studying psychology, I thought I'd be com completely somewhere different. I thought I'd be doing a master's. Um, I don't see it heading in like a specific direction at all. And I kind of see that as a good thing, not in terms of, I don't have any goals. I definitely have goals, but I do want to kind of go down the social research route, um, whether that happens or what happens with that is is gonna it'll show in a few years and um, I, I have certain goals but I, I don't see my career going in a specific route and um, yeah that yeah that's what I have to say about that and <laughs> um, also like having just graduated last year um, and I can say this like as well for other people who are kind of just graduating obviously it's really good to like get out there and start applying for jobs, but just making sure you're in a job like currently and right now, or even when you're volunteering or doing work experience, if you're enjoying it, then your career is headed somewhere good. And as long as you're happy and getting something out of it, which I am right now, I'm sure I'll be, you know, in a good place in a few years as well. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic advice. Thank you. Well, we're nearly approaching our final question, which I will pose to you both. Um, we'll go with Sophie first. The question is, considering your time at university and your own career, what would be the one bit of advice that you would like to share with our partners, students? That is absolutely worth the time and the energy to go to university. It just puts you ahead of so many other people and that's the academic side, but it's also the social side of meeting people who are also students, um, having a student lifestyle for however many years it will be, having the stress of, oh, I need to finish this assignment right now, um, but also having the fun of, hey, I'm going to go out with my, my friends tonight, or I'm going to join 
this society just because it's vaguely something that I thought I might be doing at some point in my life. Um, it'll just enrich your life in a way that you won't be knowing about if you don't choose to go this academic route. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. And Gershwin, I'll pose the same question. Considering your time at university and your own career, what would be the one bit of advice that you'd like to share with our partners, students? I'd say, obviously at this point, um, you all kind of know what you're going to study. Um, and I say to people all the time, especially year 12s and 13s that I meet, 60% of grad jobs are open to any degree discipline. So don't spend your time at university thinking, you know, if you're doing dentistry, like that's the only thing I can do at the end. And I'm really stressed about just getting this work experience. If you don't enjoy that exact route, um, there are so many jobs, grad schemes, people, companies, employers that want you out there just because you've gone to university, you've got the transferable skills. So my advice would be to just throw yourself into university and that's not just the academic side and go into your lectures, but societies, meeting people, you'll meet people from literally all walks of life and all across the world um, who've, you know, who might not even be the same age as you, might not have just, might not have just come out of college, might not have just done year 13. Um, throw yourself into absolutely everything and get that get that experience get that confidence built up and you'll you'll have such a better time for it when you leave and you've got friends for life but also a good career mind a career like mindset to leave with as well great thank you so much to both of our guests thank you for your time Thank you for sharing your experiences. I'm sure that everyone has really enjoyed listening to your insights and your advice. Thank you for tuning in to this recording of the Partners 2020 Ask the Expert session. We hope you found the discussion and the presentations from our guests useful and insightful. Remember to stay up to date with further advice from alumni and industry professionals. Subscribe to our Newcastle University Career Service YouTube channel and you can follow us on our social media channels at NCL Careers on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. We hope to see you.